Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and these are more romances that have disability representation in them. Okay, if you did not know, I actually made a part one to this video a couple months ago or in 2020, at the beginning of 2020, I made a romance books with disability representation video. Ever since then, I've been trying to find even more because disability representation is something that needs to be put in romance books or books in general. Um, if you don't know, I am a huge advocate for this as somebody who does have a disability. If you don't know about my disability, I have a chronic illness. I'm gonna link the uh, video to where I talk about it all down below and how um, there needs to be more representation in uh, books for it. So that will be down below for your viewing pleasure if you wanna check it out, um, as well as the part one to this video will, where more recommendations are. I have, again, been trying to find more books that have disability representation in them. These ones are all amazing and I've read more also since these books are more than just these books but I'm only gonna be talking about 10 that's how my recommendation videos work I only talk about 10 books but now I feel like I'm like scraping the bottom of the barrel to try and find romance books with disability rep I feel like I've read all of them or almost all of them and that is so sad that is so sad that because I like mm, it makes me mad <laughs> like I want more I want more a disability rep is definitely a subject that is very near and dear to my heart and um, I am a huge advocate for those who have disabilities and choose to put their representation in books because sometimes it is own voices and I feel like I talked about I think like I think I talked about this with uh, Chloe from Always Booked in one of her videos recently I was a guest um, on her channel one time and we talked about how um, I feel like a main reason why authors don't put disability rep in their books is because they don't have first-hand experience on it and they possibly don't want to get it wrong or offend anybody but I feel like like it could be own voices and yes people who have disabilities like I love how they write own voices novels um, t to get their own feelings and experiences through all of this. But I also feel like a disability is something you could also like research about. And I feel like if you do enough research, you could also make somebody feel so seen. Like for example, I'm about to talk about a Talia Hibbert book in a couple of minutes. And Talia Hibbert does not have the chronic illness that is in that book but it is a chronic illness that I have and she did enough research about it to where I felt so seen in it. I feel like if you dedicate enough time to research about it, I feel like you could do it really well um, if you are an author and are wanting to write a romance book or a book in general that has a disability rep in it. Again, I do not have any of the disabilities besides one on this list, um, so I cannot attest to how great the representation is or if it is good representation. So take that with a grain of salt. I just am going to tell you about books that I know that have disability rep in them. This also isn't just like disabilities, it's also illnesses um, because sometimes illnesses constitute as a disability in a sense. So let's get started. <laughs> First, we're going to be talking about the two books by an amazing author that I absolutely adore, and that is Helen Huang. The first one being The Kiss Quotient, and the second one being The Bride Test. I read this one right when it came out, and I read this one last year. Both of these books have autism representation in them. This one is about Stella, and um, she has autism, or she's on the autism spectrum. I was in a teaching with disabilities class last semester, and I think that the term Asperger's is outdated now, and people don't really use the term anymore, but this was before I feel like all of that went down. Um, so I'm just gonna use the term autism spectrum disorder and also using people first language. I feel like you also have to be cognizant of how you talk about people who have disabilities as well. Instead of saying like, I know I'm going on like, kind of like a little mini rant right here or mini side tangent, but like, instead of saying like, oh yes, that's the blind girl. Like you should be saying, or hopefully you are already saying, that girl over there is blind. You put the person before the disability. The disability has not come first. This is editing Avery High. Um, I also forgot to mention that people first language could also be um, dependent on the person you're addressing or the person you're talking about. I'm just saying that people first language should probably be your default. Um, but if you want to know somebody's personal preference of how they like to be addressed, um, then you would probably want to ask them. And most of the time they're completely fine with or people I do know I don't know about other people but the people that I know are perfectly fine with clarifying that it just depends on the person again um some people don't really care if it's person first language um but I was informed and I personally really like how when people talk about me or people interact with me or communicate with me or talk about me is using person first language because yes I have this disability and this disability is a part of me but 
I'm also a person first, if that makes sense. Like, I'm a person. I'm not solely my disability. I do have a disability, but that's not all that I am. So, just want to clarify that. Some people don't mind if you don't use people person-first language, but I feel like it should be your default if you are not already doing so. I'm just trying to hopefully inform other people. Yeah. I already was doing that, but we like talked a lot about that in my teaching with disabilities class last semester. That's just something I am also like advocating for because I feel like a lot of people just say things like that they put the disability before the person when the person should come first before the disability, if that makes sense. Anyway, I'm done with that side tangent. So she has autism or she's on the autism spectrum. She knows nothing about men. Like she finds intim intimacy to be like horrible like she just sits there and lays there while guys are with her and she doesn't know how to like be passionate with a person and so she hires michael who is a male escort to teach her the ways of dating and how to be with men and it is hilarious it is amazing and helen wong is on the autism spectrum and so these are own voices and i i love that so much and you can just feel how authentic she writes her characters and writes her books and how genuine she makes them Oh, I love her. So I read this one more recently, and this one is about Kai, who is the cousin to Michael from the first book, and he is also on the autism spectrum. And this one is about him and Esme, and Esme is a male order bride, I believe from Vietnam. I could be totally mistaken, and I'm so sorry if I am. She's from Ho Chi Minh City. I don't know if that's from Vietnam. I feel really bad. <laughs> I would definitely look that up after this. But uh, his mom really wants Kai to get a wife, and so um, he has, and she orders a male order bride from Ho Chi Minh City um, named Esme, and uh, she is actually a single mother and she really wants to provide for her young daughter. She had a daughter um, when she was in high school and Kai's mom is basically like, if you marry my son, like you will be rich. And so she's like, okay. And so she goes to be the male order bride to Kai and Kai is just like, who is this woman? Why is she in my house? What is going on? And <laughs> it's really funny because Esme is just trying to love him or show him that she loves him and like get to know him and she's just so sweet and innocent and wanting to care for him and he's just like what <laughs> um i love kai so much and like esme too esme in here was an absolute gem because esme doesn't know what autism is like at all she doesn't know what it is and she knows that like kai is not like other people in certain ways and how he acts and how he speaks and she loves him anyway and loves him because of those things and oh my god it was so sweet and like even like somebody towards the end is like saying like you know that kai has autism right she goes well what's that i don't know what that is i love him i love that so much oh my gosh i absolutely adore helen huang and you need to go pick her books up if you have not yet so next we're going to be talking about that kind of guy by talia hibbert this is the romance book that has my disability in it or my chronic illness in there um so this is about ray and zach and there is an age gap between the two to where the woman is older this book also has fake dating in here and our hero is um coming to terms with his sexuality which is demisexual our heroine in here ray has my chronic illness and i did not know that going into this book i love Charlie hibbert so much she puts some kind of disability in like every single book that she writes and i i love that I love that. I love how diverse her books are and it is fantastic. So um, I went into this book not knowing that it had my disability in there and when I read <laughs> that right when Ray was talking about what she had I like broke down crying because I've never seen that represented in a book before and I didn't expect to because not a lot of people have it and oh my gosh it was it's so good. The disability is done so well. Talia Bird does not have my chronic illness. She has a chronic illness, not my chronic illness, but I feel like she she like embraced it so well. There's obviously more to the chronic illness than there is um, talked about um, in the book. There's more to it, but what is in the book is definitely accurate. So this is about Ray and Zach again, and they're really close friends. This is friends to lovers, by the way. And Ray got out of a relationship a couple years ago with her ex-husband that she got a divorce. And she's been asked to go to this author's convention or author award show thing. And her husband is going to be there because her husband is also an author with his new wife and so zach is like how about i be your fake date and so they go there being fake dates and it's them like slowly starting to realize that they actually have feelings for one another and i really loved how Charlie hibbert talked about the chronic illness that was not the main focus of the story which it should not have been which was good but i really like how she incorporated the chronic illness into that and it was really really good this is the third book of the ravenswood series by the way and like the first two are amazing as well um the first book our heroine has 
autism. I don't know if I talked about this book, that book in the first disability video. I think I did. I don't remember. <laughs> but like all these books are fantastic and I really recommend this series. Next I have Debbie's Distraction by Ruby Dixon. This is Ice Home book number seven number seven in the Ice Home series. This is a spinoff series to Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. This is an alien romance series to where human women crash land on this desert ice planet where there are blue alien males and you have lifelong mates and partners through all this. So this one is about Devi and Nadek. I'm pretty sure that's how you say his name, Nadek. A couple years ago, Nadek was a part of this like giant earthquake volcano thing that happened on an island he was on on this planet and um, he ended up losing his leg. He has been a totally different person since then and he has basically been grumpy, mean, abrasive ever since then because he takes his anger out on other people because he cannot walk. He has people carrying him around and he feels horrible about himself because he cannot be a warrior anymore because he can't he can't be a warrior anymore. That's what he says um, because he can't go out and hunt and do things because he cannot walk. Flash forward to when they leave the they leave this island and they go to um, like the main ice land that's on this world and he meets like the human women there and there is Devi who is a scientist I think so I think she's also marine biologist possibly I don't know she really likes to study the like creatures that wash up shore on this beach that they live on and so I think she like talks to him one day about how she could possibly make him a prosthetic leg and he is like overjoyed about it but I don't think he didn't really understand he expected to be able to fully walk once she made him this leg and I don't think he realized how like grueling and taxing it can be to get a prosthetic leg and the effort and work it goes into actually learning how to walk again and so um it's about him learning how to walk again and then he starts to fall for Devi and Devi is kind of like the outcast with these women because she spends her time studying animals on the beach. <laughs> it's kind of like two misfit outcast people coming together that really like each other. So this is definitely a great book apart the Ice Home series. I feel like you could read any of these books in this series alone if you wanted to. <laughs> but um, you definitely get more out of it if you've read the previous books before this one because you don't really get to see Nadek's journey through him um, on the island before he moved to the beach part of the land or the, the planet. Um, so I really recommend possibly reading the previous books, but it's okay if you don't. <laughs> then we have Blindfall by Amanda Milo. This has visual impairment representation in here. And this is also an alien romance. Um, and our heroine has a guide dog. So this is an alien romance to where our heroine and her guide dog were taken in their sleep and um, put on this planet and put on an auctioning stage. And so our hero notices that some aliens are like leering at her and wanting to buy her and he knows that those aliens are like sketch skeevy and so he's like I want to save this woman from going through horrible things and so he buys this woman and her dog and then he realizes that she cannot see it. and so he's asked his brother to find her home planet for her and once he does he will take her back to her home planet but while he's looking for the home planet she should stay with him on his little farm that he has and so it's a romance between the two of them on this little dinky dink farm that he has taking care of these like beasts that are kind of like cows <laughs> and horses mixed together and it is just so sweet and wholesome and our heroine trying to navigate things while she cannot see and trying to figure out how like how does this man look if she cannot see him and she knows that he's an alien like how does he look my only like I want to say issue the only thing that I like had a little gripe about is like I don't know if it's necessarily great representation in one aspect because I followed or I've see, seen a couple of Molly Burke's videos Molly Burke is a um youtuber who happens to be blind and she talks about her experience as being blind and I know that one of her videos that one of the myths about somebody who is blind or people think about people who are blind are um the fact that like they have to touch your face to like see what your face looks like and she's like that's not a thing like I don't touch people's faces to like know what they look like like that's not a thing and that like kind of like happened in here but like also I don't really know because there's also a different circumstance because <laughs> this is an alien <laughs> so she wants to know how he feels on his face so just know that going in I don't know if it's the best representation in there but if you are visually impaired please let me know um, if you've read this book and what you think about it and if the representation is done well because I'd love to know. Then I have Welcome to the Dark Side by Gianna Darling. This one the disability isn't really talked about all that much kind of is our heroine in here has cancer so that's a disability slash illness rep in here our heroine i think as a little girl like she was in um 
the hospital even as a little girl with this cancer and there she meets uh zeus or she met zeus beforehand um she was at church with her parents and zeus ended up saving her because a shooting happened in front of the church um but in saving her he got injured and then he also killed somebody so he has to go to jail so he's recovering in the hospital before he goes to jail and she happens to like live in this hospital because she has cancer and um they end up meeting and talking for a little bit he is way older than her um she's a little kid and he is a grown adult when they meet um and then he ends up going to jail and he ends up becoming like pen pals or all of this and throughout the years she develops a huge crush on him and he like stops talking to her and stops writing letters to her once he realizes this because he knows it's highly inappropriate um and so it's years later once he's gotten out of jail and she is a grown adult now or 18 19 i don't remember or she's in high school but she is a consenting adult now so i believe 18. <laughs> she ends up getting a job at the bar that he owns because he is the owner of a motorcycle club or the leader of a motorcycle club so his motorcycle club owns this bar and she starts working there he very reluctantly starts to fall for her and she wants him and it's very taboo very steamy i really liked this uh the cancer in here is talked about if cancer is a trigger for you i don't recommend reading this one because it is touched on quite a bit then i have one of my favorites which is full tilt by emma scott i'm like smiling whenever i talk about this book because it is just so good and i need a physical copy of the second one because i don't have one yet um this is about casey and jonah casey is the leader of this rock star band or the lead singer of this rock star band um all girl rock star band she has had a huge trouble with substance abuse so if that's a trigger for you but that's not the disability rep in here that could be <laughs> she's basically become an alcoholic after every show or even during every show she becomes like blackout drunk jonah is their limo driver for the night and um casey's bodyguard ends up putting her in this limo and tells jonah to take her home so he does um but she is blackout completely passed out and once he gets to her house all the doors are locked nobody's home he can't like bring her inside she doesn't have any keys on her he's like well i don't want to leave this girl on the porch in the dark like without putting her inside her home so um, i'm gonna take her to my house have her sleep on my couch and then take her home in the morning so that's what he does and then she wakes up in the morning she meets him and they become friends and then they possibly become something more jonah very reluctantly becomes friends with her because he has this very strict schedule that he is sticking to and he has a heart condition here that he has dealt with for a while and it has been a huge sore subject when it comes to women for him because his past relationship left him because of his heart condition like it's about them coming together and her like telling him i love you no matter if you have this condition or not i don't give a crap i don't care if you live i don't care if you die i want to be with you and it's him trying to understand that because he does not understand that i adore this book so much it is so good it is amazing and more people need to read this but you also cannot read this book on your own you need to read book two with it you need to there's it's a duology so so then we're going to be going into three historical romances i plan on hopefully making a historical romance video that's filled with disability rep in it for only historical romances but i'm two books shy of 10 books for that list so i've read all the popular ones if you know ones that are not popular that are historical romances that have disability rep in them please give them to me because i've read all the popular ones so first we of course have the madness of lord ian mckenzie by jennifer ashley our here on here ian has autism um before they knew what autism was so um he acts very differently compared to his family and other people around him and his father always thought that he was mad and crazy and so his father put him in an insane asylum and so when his father dies his eldest brother becomes like heir ends up getting him out of that estate asylum and so it's years later after he's experienced all of that and so then he overhears one of his acquaintances like telling him like that he's going to marry this widow but ian knows that this man like he has like a home or a house that is full of women he just keeps there and like he's gonna cheat on this woman like every day and so he goes to find this woman that this guy is going to marry to like warn her um and once he sees her he becomes infatuated by her and wants her he tells her everything and he's like this guy is skeevy and not good but i want you can you be can you be mine can you i want you can you be mine <laughs> i just love how adoring he is to beth and how much beth like loves him and like knows he's different but like she doesn't give a crap she doesn't give a crap what other people think like she loves ian for ian and it is so good and like cry i love this so much and ian and beth are everything beth just loves 
and unconditionally and Ian loves Beth unconditionally and like yes the disability is there but it's not like the main like thing like there are obviously obstacles when it comes to that but they communicate towards the end they communicate well enough or Beth tries to communicate to Ian well enough to try and understand him and she puts in the initiative to understand him and not just brush him aside and push him off and it is so good I love Jennifer Ashley so much and I need to read more in this series I've only read up to book two this was done just so well and oh it is beautiful it's beautiful next I have another favorite it was one of my favorites of 2020 we have never seduced a Scott by Maya Banks this is about a hero and a heroine who are from rivaling clans in Scotland. Um, he is the laird of one clan and she is the daughter to the laird of the other clan and they are rivals and the um, king of this land is basically like I want these clans to finally get together and stop fighting so I'm putting an arranged marriage between the two of them and they've always been taught to hate the other one and so they they do not want to be put in this arranged marriage but nobody knows that our heroine here is actually deaf. She fell off her horse a couple years ago trying to escape her family um, because they're putting her in arranged marriage with this abusive man. And ever since then, she cannot hear. She, the way she gets around and understands people is by reading lips. She gets put in this arranged marriage with this man and the first time that she meets him, she becomes enthralled by him because she can hear like his low baritone voice like she can't understand what he's saying at all but she hears like a muffled baritone sound because she can hear low baritone noises and she becomes infatuated by him and just wants him to talk all the time and wants to be with him because she can hear something he is like what is going on in their fa and her family is like what are you doing like you've been taught her your whole life to hate this man what are you doing it's about her going back to his clan with him him trying to understand this woman and trying to figure out like why why she does not speak to other people and eventually try to understand her and her deafness and, and to just watch her grow as a person and become more confident and loving of herself and it is so good it is so good our author here based um, our heroine's deafness um, on her husband's her husband has a similar I don't want to say level of deafness I don't know if that's a thing same hearing impairment there you go, duh, um, hearing impairment as our heroine. So that's what she based our heroine off of is her husband. And she has a whole little section in the back of the book about that that I really liked to read about. And lastly is one that a lot of people don't know about, and that is Devil in Spring by Lisa Kleypas. This is the third book in the Ravenels. And also look at this beautiful step bag of the two. I love them so much. This is my favorite in the Ravenel series. I absolutely adore it. This is about Gabriel and Pandora and Pandora throughout the series has known, been known as the woman who doesn't want to get married. She wants to run her board game business and just live a spinster life. She doesn't want to get married. She doesn't want anything to do with men. But then one day she goes to a ball um, to keep her sister company because her sister wants all those things. There she gets like stuck in a settee or something like her gown gets like stuck in it and Gabriel like oversees this and is like trying to help her and like trying to get her out of the settee and um <laughs> it looked like people walk in and like they look like they're in a compromising position or that he's like ruining her this whole scandal comes about he's like you have to marry me or your reputation will get be ruined like i have to marry you and she's like i don't want to get married like i don't want to get married like that's not a thing for me i don't want to do it and so it's like Gabriel inviting her to his estate with all of his family to try and convince her to marry him because he feels obligated to marry her because he ruined her and it's them like slowly starting to have feelings for one another and it is so good the uh, disability representation in here is in Pandora when she was a child she suffered abuse from her father I think she she either got hit or fell down the stairs or did something I don't remember the specifics but she is slightly or completely, I don't remember, deaf in one ear. And so that's why she's very clumsy. And she has these vertigo moments. A vertigo is represented in here um, because um, her center of gravity is like off balance now because she cannot hear very well out of one ear. And so Gabriel like asks her about it and she like tells him the whole story about what happened to her. It is just heartbreaking. And I love how she like confided in him 
oh my gosh it's about him like purposefully trying to be like better for her and have her life be better and so she he purposefully stands on the side that she can hear on toward he purposefully talks in the ear that she can hear in um because there were some times where he would talk in her other ear and she didn't even notice and he's like is she ignoring me um before he found out about her disability and like she had to be like no i just can't hear you <laughs> he purposefully stands on one side of her and asks and turns her so that um certain people can be next to the ear she can hear out of really well i loved that so much he really advocates for her um in a time period where disabilities aren't really talked about all that much and i love how lisa klepas put that in this book so there you have it those are 10 more books that have disability representation in them i hope y'all enjoyed please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to or if you have any recommendations for me there are books that i have not already read <laughs> um but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all Thank mm -hmm. you.